Good morning, everybody. It's been a couple weeks, uh, but it's good to be back and studying the Word. So I uh, hope everybody's doing well. Let's pray, and we'll play a worship song, and then we'll jump in. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for today. Father, I thank you for your grace. I thank you for taking care of us, for providing for us, and for allowing us to study your Word. We worship you now, and pray that you would receive the worship and the praise that we bring you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's worship and we'll come right back. Saturday, you are all prepared to watch the Ducks win. I know you are. 
Um, and then watch Georgia and Alabama beat up on each other later. Should be a good day of college football. Uh, anyway, I hope everybody is doing well. So, we have been in the book of Matthew, and we're kind of slowly making our way towards the end of Matthew here. And we are now studying the last week of Jesus' life as he has made his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. And then he visited the temple and overturned the tables and, you know, drove all the money changers and those who are doing business and commerce in the temple drove them out, he taught in the temple, uh, he rebuked the Pharisees and the religious leaders of the time, and things are getting real. It's, uh, it's getting to be no joke. And Jesus is uh, now going to take chapter 24 and 25 to discuss some important future events. Now, it would take a very long time, I think, to study out all the scriptures and all the places that reference the um, things Jesus is talking about. And so I'm just going to kind of do a summary of 24 and 25 and Jesus explaining some future events. One, being the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple. Two, explaining or talking about his ultimate return after having been crucified and ascending to the Father. So the return of Christ. Now, uh, we're going to read shortly, Jesus um, doesn't say when these events will happen. He says that only the Father knows the specific date. However, we will have signs that point to the events that he's talking about. So, he doesn't give us a specific date. He just says, here's some things to keep an eye out for. And uh, he says that when you start to see some of this stuff, it, he explains it or he calls it the beginning of birth pangs. And if any of you know what a uh, birth process looks like, typically the contractions start and then they get closer and closer and closer together. And as they get closer together and more intense, uh, and then the baby is born. And so when he explains Here's some things you're going to see that will be signs. And he says that it's like the beginning of birth pangs. What's he saying? He's saying when you start to see some of this stuff, it's going to happen. And then those things will start to get closer and closer together. The events will become more and more intense over the course of time. And so some of the things that he says, and we'll read this in just a minute, but some of the things that he says you will see is... Uh, false messiahs or people claiming to be Jesus or Christ or a savior. He said you'll see world violence and it'll become worse and extreme. Natural disasters which will intensify. Severe religious persecution. Terrible apostasy and betrayal and division. Uh, the rising of false leaders offering false hope. This great falling away and sin increasing and the love of people growing cold. Some enduring and being saved and ultimately world evangelism and many being converted. So let's read Matthew 24 verse 1 through 28. It's a large uh, group or passage of text, but... Um, We'll read this, and then we're going to break it down into the two sections I mentioned, the destruction and the fall of Jerusalem and, and the temple, and then the return, Jesus explaining his return after having died on the cross, ascended, and uh, then he will return one day. So here we go. Jesus came out of the temple and was going away when his disciples came up to point out the temple buildings to him. And he said to them, Do you not see all these things? Truly I say to you, not one stone here will be left upon another, which will not be torn down. As he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things happen, and what will be the sign of your coming, and of the end of the age? Jesus answered and said to them, See to it that no one misleads you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will mislead many. You will be hearing of wars and rumors of wars. See to it that you are not frightened, for those things must take place. But that is not yet the end. 
For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and in various places there will be famines and earthquakes. But all these things are merely the beginning of birth pangs. Then they will deliver you to tribulation and will kill you, and you will be hated by all nations because of my name. At that time many will fall away and will betray one another and hate one another. Many false prophets will arise and will mislead many, because lawlessness is increased. Most people's love will grow cold, but the one who endures to the end, he will be saved. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, which was spoken of through Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, then those who are in Judea must flee to the mountains. Whoever is on the housetop must not go down to the things out that are in the house. Whoever is in the field must not turn back to get his cloak. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. But pray that your flight will not be in the winter or on the Sabbath, for then there will be a great tribulation, such as has not yet occurred since the beginning of the world until now, nor ever will. Unless those days had been cut short, no life would have been saved, but for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. Then, if anyone says to you, Behold, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe him, for false Christians and false prophets will arise and will show great signs and wonders, so as to mislead, if possible, even the elect. Behold, I have told you in advance. So, if they say to you, Behold, he is in the wilderness, do not go out. Or, behold, he is in the inner rooms. Do not believe them. For just as lightning comes from the east and flashes even to the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. Wherever the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. Okay, so let's break this down into two sections, two different things that Jesus is talking about. The temple and Jerusalem and the destruction of it. And then Jesus talking about his return. So he says, it says that he came down from the temple and the disciples say, hey, look at this, look at this spectacle of incredible craftsmanship called the temple. And they're looking out across the temple. So they're, ta- they're pointing this out to Jesus. And truly the temple was magnificent. It was sitting on top of a mountain with white marble and gold. It was massive. It could hold thousands of people. It had huge pillars and amazing architecture, and it was a great wonder of the world. So the disciples, they're admiring it and are in awe of it, and they want to admire it with Jesus. And so they point it out. But look what Jesus says. He says, Truly I say to you, not one stone here will be left upon another, which will not be torn down. So he's like, I don't know if he's not impressed or if he's just like you're you're you guys are impressed by the wrong things this is just a natural building and this building is going to get torn down so don't get too and don't admire it too much right he's not impressed now if you think about it jesus was there when the entire world was created so when man makes a building jesus is like hey good job man uh but you know he was there when everything in the entire world was created, all life. So he's kind of a little bit better of a builder. Anyway, um, he tells the disciples, he's like, hey, guys, sorry to tell you this, but that thing's getting torn down. And it happened, right? In 70 AD, not too long after Jesus had said it would happen, Rome grew tired of the rebellious Jews and they sent Titus to march against them and the city and the temple were destroyed. Now Josephus, a historian, wrote that you wouldn't even be able to tell that the place had been inhabited. That's how badly it was destroyed. So Jesus, just as Jesus said, none of the stones that were there would be left upon themselves. And so Jesus talks about and, and basically 
tells them, predicts the future. And years, not many years after the, he says this and he dies on the cross and he ascends to heaven and the disciples are doing their thing and the Jews revolt against Rome and they want to take back their city. But Rome marches against them. Titus marches against them, destroys the temple, destroys the city. And so that prophecy is fulfilled. Then Jesus begins to talk about the what's going to progress over time and the signs that will point to the fact that he is going to return and then wrap everything up. And so Jesus is about, at this time when he's talking, he's about to be crucified. And then he's going to rise three days later from the dead, and he's going to ascend to be with the Father. But he promised that he would return. However, he kind of explains what will be happening before then. So look what he says. He says, and so why is this important? Well, so first of all, we want to talk about everything that they kind of sent, focused on, the man-made structures, the buildings, the temple, this stuff, all came and was destroyed, okay? And Jesus says, now, focus your attention on the fact that I am going to go be with the Father, but I am also going to return, and I'm going to judge sin finally. And... There's going to be signs. The disciples had asked, when will this happen? When will the destruction of the temple happen? When will you return? These are the things that the, Jesus are, that the disciples are asking Jesus. And so Jesus is explaining to them without giving them the specific date. Because he says, hey, only my father knows the specific date. But watch for these signs. So he says, therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, which was spoken of through Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, then those who are in Judea must flee to the mountains. Whoever is on the housetop, and he goes on to say what they should do. Basically, get the heck out of there. Now, this does refer to the event that we just talked about in 70 AD. But it also explains or talks about or prophesies about a future event. Now, both events are to, there to judge sin. The first event in 70 AD when the temple was torn down was a sign um, of, or was a, a judgment of sin for that time and a sign of of what was to come when Jesus returns and there will be judgment of sin again. So the first one in 70 AD will come with the signs that we re that we read about already and referenced above. But the second event will have the same signs but they will be like birth pains. They will be closer together and intensified. So Jesus says, when you see the abomination of desolation, now here's something interesting that we can kind of point out. He says, when you see it. So it can be seen. The abomination of desolation will be seen. Because you can see it, you can react to it. Daniel prophesied about it, and that's what Jesus says. When you see the abomination of desolation that Daniel prophesied about, well, what was that? That, what, was, what was being talked about there? So there's kind of two fulfillments of Daniel's prophecy. One was in 170 BC, where Antiochus Epiphanes, the king of Syria, conquered Jerusalem, and he tried to force everybody to become Greek. And so he took the altar of the uh, burnt offerings, and he made it an altar to Zeus, and sacrificed pigs on it, which were unclean animals. And he set up a trade and prostitution in the temple chambers. Now Jesus, as he's talking to the disciples and they're asking him, when are these things going to happen? Jesus says, when you see the abomination of desolation that Daniel talked about. Well, he's saying, when this happens again, when you see the defiling of the, the holy place and the, and the temple. 
And in 70 AD, Titus, who comes in and destroys the temple, destroys the city, um, fulfills what Jesus is saying about the abomination of desolation. So, pre-Christ's return, the first two are documented and they happened. One in 170 BC, one in 70 AD. Some reject the idea that it will happen again, but most believe that it will. That the prophecy points to not just that time, but that, that the beginning of birth pangs will eventually lead to this happening again. And here's the thing that I think about. Should we argue about whether it's going to happen again or not? Um, which it will, because Jesus is talking about when he's going to return, and he hasn't returned yet. So, uh, but why argue? Why not just be ready for it if it does happen? Know the signs and be ready to be watchful for them. Know not to get tricked by false messiahs, but know that it's Jesus when he returns. If that happens, we should be ready. So, let's assume that it's going to happen again. Well, he said it will stand in the holy place. Antichus Epiphanes and Titus stood in the temple. Many believe that the temple may exist again. And so the next time this happens, it will happen the same way. Someone will stand in the middle of the temple and they will sacrifice a pig or some, some sort of a desolate, abomination of desolation that can be seen. Now you say, well, that's hard to do when there's no temple. And that to that I would say, well, many of the prophecies about Israel would have been hard to fulfill over the last 2,000 years prior to 1948 because there was no Israel on the map. Not until 1948 when the borders were reestablished and the name Israel was put back on the map. And so if that can happen for a whole nation, I would imagine that a temple can be rebuilt as well. So many believe that a temple will be rebuilt and there will be a sacrifice uh, in the holy place that will be an abomination of desolation. You'll see it again. And this will be a sign. Some say that the temple is representative of religion or Christianity and that the abomination will be the desolation of it, especially a Christianity. But the signs prior to the abomination are the beginning of the birth pangs and the signs after which are the ones that are intensifying and become a great tribulation in that time revelation talks about what's going to take place there's going to be thunderings and lightnings and earthquakes and natural catastrophes look at uh revelation chapter 8 and 9, and, and 11, and 13. Uh, natural catastrophes, demonic-like locusts and plagues, demonic-like armies, angry nations who destroy the earth, evil political rulers, false and evil religious rulers, terrible destructions and sufferings, uh, both upon nature and upon people, an evil, deceptive, world power in Revelation 17. So the days, so, so prior to the abomination of desolation that we're going to see at the, uh, when the end is near, there will be uh, the beginning of birth pain. So we'll see storms and natural catastrophes and plagues of some sort and religious rulers. But it says it's like birth pangs. So what's going to happen? He's kind of saying, hey, it's just going to get... The time in between those events are going to get shorter and shorter. And the intensification of those events is going to be greater and greater. Which is not real exciting. This isn't the sermon that you preach on Sunday when you want everybody to cheer and get excited. And um, you feel all, all, all jolly and happy. But this is what Jesus said was going to happen. Then, when you see the abomination of desolation... After the abomination of desolation that's going to happen in the future is the great tribulation. And then it's just going to be just so intense and so difficult. He says, unlike anything has anyone has ever seen, but he does promise that 
it, it's going to be cut short because of the elect. In other words, because of Christians, because of believers, those who follow Christ, those days are going to be cut short on their behalf. And there's going to be, but before that happens, there's going to be false Christs and false prophets who will arise and they're going to do signs and wonders. And you say, well, how would people be so deceived? Well, when things get really bad and really desperate, people, and, and then a person comes along and promises to fix things, they will draw people to themselves. So the Antichrist will arise and deceive the whole earth, Revelation 13 says. But Jesus says, don't be deceived. He will not come from the desert, some remote place. He will not come from the chamber or some secret quiet place. He will come like lightning, where if you've seen lightning, it lights up the whole sky. So he will come out of heaven like lightning, sudden and surprising, but visible to all. He says, but immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from the sky, and the power of heavens will be shaken, and then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky, and power and great glory, and he will send forth his angels with a great trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of the sky to the other. Verse 42, Therefore, be on alert, for you do not know which day your Lord is coming. And that's how we wrap this up. So he points to the fact that there will be a destruction of the temple. There will be what is called the abomination of desolation, which, yes, was, happened in 70 AD, but will happen again. Between that time and the next time, there is all of the signs that we talked about, from earthquakes to natural disasters to false leaders and uh, plagues and things like that. Those events will happen, but they'll be spread out. But over time, they will get closer and closer together and more intense. Then there will be possibly another temple built, something to the, where there is a holy place where an abomination of desolation will be seen by people. Whether it's a true temple building and then uh, sacrifice or the altar um, being taken over and pigs being sacrificed on it or whatever that happens, uh, or if it's representative of the fall of Christianity and the desolation of it being an abomination, whatever it is, we will see it. And in that time, the Great Tribulation will be so intense with the difficulties that are going on in the world. But those days will be cut short. And even though people try to rise up and cause people to follow them because they promise to be some sort of savior, Jesus says, don't be deceived. When I return, I will return from the sky like lightning, like a flash that's so bright. Nobody, you won't miss it. And he says he will come with a great trumpet sound and they will gather together his elect. So he says in verse 42, therefore, because you don't know when this might happen, always be on alert. For you do not know which day your Lord is coming. Intense stuff. And like I said, it's getting real. And these are the messages that Jesus wanted his people to know right before he's about to get crucified. These are some of the last things that he's telling them to be aware of. And so they were all about to face this, right? Uh, I guess this was probably 33 uh, AD or whatever it was. Um, and so like 37, 40, 37 years later, something around there is when that first destruction of the temple was about to take place. And he's pointing to that going, it's going to be tough. There's going to be an abomination of desolation. Get out of the city. And some of you guys are going to get killed during that time. And what happened? That happened. It came true. But then, 
he's talking about future events in this prophecy and saying, now, this stuff is going to happen again and it's going to intensify over time. But don't be deceived. Stay the course. Keep your heart right. Believe, trust, and follow Jesus. One day, when he returns, nobody knows when it'll be, but all should be ready for it. And you will see him, the Son of Man, coming on clouds of the sky with power and glory, great glory. And he will send forth his angels with a great trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of the sky to the other. Whew. Intense stuff. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for your promise, and I thank you for your warnings, and I thank you that you will have given us instruction so that we're not surprised or caught off guard, so that we are also prepared and we know what to do. Lord, help us never to miss it. Give us strength, and Holy Spirit, give us courage, wisdom, peace, love, and joy during any of the times where we see trouble in this world. We remain faithful and loyal to you, and we remain on alert for whenever and whatever you want to do. We love you and we trust you, and we thank you that you teach us and show us your ways. Help us, Lord, to stay, uh, reveal yourself to us more and more so that our relationship with you can continue to grow. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have an awesome week, and we will see you back here next time.